Hi folks, hope you're okay. Boy, that was absolutely amazing. That was a real blessing. Absolutely brilliant. Really, really enjoyed that. Just uh, just been to the uh, conference. Uh, uh, it was just absolutely such a blessing. Uh, I couldn't stay for it all because I've got to get back. But it was a blessing. And uh, I think uh, Psalm 34, yeah, just uh, just read this. I will bless the Lord, Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt him, his name, together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and he saved him out of all his trouble. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. Uh, t tonight uh, it was on uh, one, Cr 1 Chronicles chapter 14 and uh, it was just talking about we can get victory that we need to listen to God and uh, he, he was uh, a preacher that uh, preaches on deliverance quite a lot so there was some stuff I think I I agree when we we are saved by grace and God is good. Um but there were demons coming out of every orifice, which was a bit too much, but a lot of what he said was helpful. He was talking about deliverance and standing on God's word and and uh, not letting the enemy get a fold in your life and, and that we can speak victory over our lives and we need to stand on the word. And there's a lot of really helpful stuff in that, which I found a real blessing tonight. And... Um, Worship. I really enjoyed the worship. Uh, some really, uh, uh, really, uh, just uh, lovely songs that just lift your spirit, you know. So I just uh, was blessed tonight. I want to talk a about a couple of things. <laughs> I want to talk about uh, the Black Hebrew Israelites. And also, um, Sarah, and one or two other things. First of all, what's going on with the Black Hebrew Israelites? I mean, I bumped into them a couple of times. Last time I bumped into them, second to last time, he told me that uh, the King James was a black man. And then I bumped into another group this, uh, this week, and I asked this guy, what, what did he think about John 3.16, what did it say, you know, and he was telling me that it, John 3.16, for God so loved the world, uh, was all about uh, Jewish people, that God has come to save Jewish people. And then he goes all over, he, said, he spends 20 minutes going over all these different passages to explain John 3.16, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and basically he was saying that black people need to realize that they're Jewish and this is the main message and I said to him well read me uh, Galatians chapter 1 verse one, uh, 3 to 6 it talks about cursed anyone who does not preach the gospel and, that, and the gospel is about Jesus. 
dying for sinners, for Jew and Gentile. So the first point that I want to say about these black Hebrew Israelites, whatever group they are, a lot of black people are going to be taken in by this because it's they're trying to appeal to people, <coughs> black people's identity. As if this is the main thing. But our identity is not in our colour. Our identity is in Christ. It doesn't matter whether we're black or white. It doesn't matter whether we're Chinese or Japanese. What matters is that Christ died for sinners. Whatever race you are. And that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you can be saved. If you repent and believe in him, you can be saved. You know? So... He spent 20 minutes going all over the place and he didn't get to this basic message that believe in Jesus Christ and you'll be saved whether you're black or white. For him it was, no, what you need to believe in is that the black people have lost their identity, they need to realise they're Jewish, etc. And that's not the message of the Gospel. The message of the Gospel is that Jesus Christ died on a cross and took the punishment for our sin that we might be right with God through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ if we repent of any sin that's not right in our lives so I, I just think that the Hebrew Israelites are just all over the place I mean they're just deceiving people and they're very clever and deceptive because they, they say that Christianity has become pagan and they, they talk about a, a lot of these groups that end up being uh, cults talk like this. They go, you know, Christianity has become paganized. You know, the Sabbath is from uh, a pagan religion. It's not from the Bible. So, uh, you know, Christmas is not in the Bible. It's a pagan festival and all this. And, you know, to people who are young in the faith and they hear this kind of stuff, it seems quite plausible, you know. The thing is, you've got to differentiate between Christianity and Catholicism. Catholicism is not necessarily Christianity. Catholicism came in with tradition and came in with things that sometimes that man put in. Christianity is biblical. And in the Bible, it does teach about uh, worshipping on the on the Lord's day, uh, on, on, you know, on a on a on a Sunday. But it also talks about not to argue about these issues, not to argue about which day to worship on. That's in uh, in Romans chapter, I think it's uh, fourteen and fifteen. Not to argue about various days, you know. So, a young believer hearing this, or you know, paganism is crept into the church, they'd be taken in by these Hebrew Israelites. You know, Christianity is Christianity. Christianity is based on the Word of God and the pure Word of God. And it's based about Jesus, who Jesus is. And another thing that I noticed with the Hebrew Israelites is, is total heresy in that he denied the virgin birth. He said the virgin birth is not in the Bible, it's pagan, and it was from other pagan religions. And then I, I thought, whoa, you're really, really heretical now. You've really done it. You know, the Hebrew word for virgin is Alma. And it's in reference to a virgin in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 9. It's nothing to do with paganism, it's there in the Hebrew Bible. You know, if you want to know the word, the Hebrew word for virgin, uh, go to Apologetics Press and look up the word virgin birth, uh, Apologetics Press. So I, I just think that if you're a young person, basically the Hebrew Israelites, um, they're mixed up, they're messed up, they, they really don't know how to teach the Bible. They come across as confident as if they know but really they're just they're just children and they don't know their bible and they're dangerous and they will confuse a lot of people they confuse a lot of people so stay away from them if you're a young person 
you know, it's, it's deception. So it says in the last days, many cults will come. And they're a cult. They're a, they're a cult. All the different Hebrew Israelites groups are a cult, you know, because they're, 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 they're controlling people and um, they're very, very dangerous. So watch out for them. So now I want to talk about Sarah. Sarah is a, a, a black guy, he, he's at uh, Hyde Park, he debates, he has a certain faith about ancestry. He's, he's all, he talks a lot about black liberation. I like Sarah. Sarah's at Speaker's Corner, if you're listening to this Sarah. Sarah, I like it. I really like the guy. I think he's great. I love the guy. No doubt about it. I love Sarah. I'm a fan of Sarah. I like Sarah. You know, I just, I just do. I like the guy. He's a good guy. But I don't agree with. I, the, I, I don't understand why the Muslims want to try and beat him all the time and beat his mates like Big Brother, the guy called Big Brother, and um, or the other guys who, who are into this kind of religion that they have of this kind of black race religion, where it's blacks only and they they have their ancestry and all this, kinetic or kemetic, whatever they call it. And it's getting all the Muslims right upset because they, they, they're trying to debate about this religion that Sarah has and they're getting all upset and they're getting upset because Sarah's really good at debate and he wins his debates. But I don't see any big deal about it myself. I mean, Sarah's on record for acknowledging that his religion is, is, is not objective, it's personal, it's subjective. But the moment he, 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 he said that, the debate was over. End of. You don't have to worry about the guy. The guy's admitted that his faith is subjective. So you, you don't you don't have to worry about him. But yet the Muslims seem to feel they've got to debate him and beat him in debate. But Sarah's beat the moment he said his faith was subjective. It was game over. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just game over. End of. So all these Muslim guys who were macho, because Sarah's a... a, a you know, kind of, kind of, like a guy who can look after himself, they're all getting upset and they want to debate him and, and they want to try to beat him and, and I'm thinking, well, just chill out. The guys that said that his faith's subjective, so it's end of debate. There's nothing to debate about, you know what I mean? So, but I like Sarah, I think he's a great guy. Um, but I don't agree with this, like, black liberation. It's all about black people and not about everybody else. You know, Christianity is about all races. Jesus Christ came to die for black and white, green, yellow, whatever your race, he came to die. And he calls everywhere, calls everybody to come and trust in him as Lord and Saviour. You know, it's not about one race. You know, so for me, Sarah, I like you, bro. I think you really, I, I just love you. I think you've got character. There's something about you. Uh, I think you're one of the smartest people at Hyde Park. But I don't feel I have to debate you or, or get involved in debating you because at the end of the day, the moment you say your faith's subjective, then, you know, enjoy your life. You, you kind of, I don't see how you can win any debate with that kind of position. And uh, it makes me laugh. I absolutely laugh at the Muslim apologists and guys who want to constantly try to beat you in debate as if somehow they feel they have to beat you down. And then you get into debate, and because you're, you're clever, you kind of you kind of get the better of them. But at the end of the day, if they just sat back and thought about what you've said, that you've said that your faith is subjective, then it's game over because it's just your opinion and at the end of the day if it's your opinion what's there to debate about um so so yeah so all this drama about sarah and all this issue about sarah and all this i, I think a lot to do with it is muslim pride the muslim men in their culture I mean, Sarah, Sarah, what Sarah's doing is he's holding them to the coals, he's holding them to the fire. And you know, I think rightly so, I think there are some Muslim men down there who think that they rule the roost at Hyde Park. 
And I think Sarah's done the right thing, really. He's really said, you know what? You're not bullying me. You know, I'm not having any of it. I am standing up for my right of free speech. And you're not intimidating me. And he stood up to them. And some of these, a number of Muslim men, they find it hard to back down because, you know, they, they need a way out. They need a way out, you know, so they, they can save face. So I'll give you an example. I debated a guy, like, I was talking to him with, about the gospel. And uh, he, um, sorry about this, I'll put the light on. He, uh, well, I was giving him the gospel and I, and I quoted Isaiah 53 and it really hit home to the guy. The guy was really like, whoa. You know, and I, I could see in his face he knew it was true. And then he started arguing about different things that were irrelevant. And I thought, you know what, I need to give him a way out. He's kind of feeling his masculinity is being challenged here. He's lost this debate and, he, and he's trying to fight back. So I said, oh, yeah, yeah you know, we're, we're kind of like equal. Yeah, you, you, we, we call it a draw. And he was happy then we called it a draw. So I gave him a way out to save face. Now with Sarah... I'm sure that he's given people, some of these Muslim guys, an opportunity to save face. But some of them are, seem to be wanting to control Hyde Park. And he has thought to himself, you know what, I'm not letting you save face. You need to be held to the fire about it. So I think the best thing to do for these Muslim people is just to humble yourself and just to say, you know what, we don't control Hyde Park, we have free speech, and we either debate the guy and beat him in debate, or we just leave him alone. But to constantly go on and on and on about it every week and bring it up as drama, you know, it's getting ridiculous. You've got to leave Sarah alone, you've got to leave his mates alone, and just call it a day, and humble yourself. But if you can't humble yourself and you keep wanting to browbeat him and, and keep uh, bringing these issues up and all and the rest, then at the end of the day, you're just gonna, you're just gonna, uh, you know, there comes a day when you've just got to accept, you know, call it a day. Otherwise, you know, unfortunately, it'll escalate to something even worse. And then if it does, it'll spoil it for everybody else at the at Hyde Park where our freedom of speech will be lost. So I suppose the older members of Hyde Park, Muslims and Sarah's friends, the older people uh, in the community there need to come together and say to Sarah and say to the Usli, 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 other Muslim brothers, look, please, please just calm it down now. Just let it go uh, and let's just move on. Because if it doesn't, it'll just... in fester and fester and fester so that's my thinking so there comes a point where you've taught them the lesson Sarah but then you can't keep going on because eventually it's going to cause it's it's going to move from even though it might not be your fault it's going to move into worse things than just a bit of drama at, at Hyde Park so that's not blaming you or anything like that but I'm just saying that's the way it is there comes a point when you've just got to try and build, go above that and, and reach out to those who are more mature and older in the, in, 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 in the community there, whether Muslim or from your religion, and, and get together and, and try and calm this down and give it, have a, you know, get some tranquility. And if they can't, then, uh, you know, that doesn't mean you compromise. It doesn't mean you, 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 you compromise on some of the things you've said about Muhammad. You know, it, you know, they've got to accept that if you're saying things intellectually, intellectually, honestly, from the heart, that you intellectually, honestly believe certain things and you can back it up with evidence, then they've got to accept that. They can't just try and stop your free speech. You know, so those are my thoughts about you, Sarah. Um, I love you mate, think you're great, um, think you've lost the debate when you say faith is that your faith is subjective and it's just personal and 
I don't find that a challenge. I find you a challenge. I think you're a very clever person. I think you're one of the most cleverest persons at Hyde Park. So I find I would find you quite a, a challenge intellectually. But uh, I don't find your position challenging because you've made a. Uh, you kind of shot yourself in the foot when you say uh, your faith is subjective. And I don't agree with this, like, thinking about black people all the time and not thinking about others. I, I don't believe in racism. And to me, I'm not saying you're a racist, but to me, it kind of, it kind of pushing other, other people away who are not black. And I think whether, uh, me, well, I don't care whether you're black or white, Chinese or Japanese, to me, we're all... You know, colour doesn't matter to me, you know, it just doesn't matter to me. So, yeah, that, that's where I'm at there. So, so those are my thoughts on uh, Hebrew Israelites and my thoughts on Sarah. Um, there's been some trouble at Mill with Rebel Media. And uh, I want to talk about that, and I want to talk about what's happening in America with racism and stuff like that. I want to say, again, from my point of view, I don't believe in racism. Uh, for me, you know, I went out with someone uh, a few years ago who was a black person. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not racist. But... There's a lot of tension in America about racism, and, and I, I just want to talk about that and, and Rebel Media. I've been enjoying Rebel Media, watching a lot of it, a lot of their reporters, because they report on issues that the media doesn't generally report on. Um, I think that there are issues that need to be uh, addressed. There are issues about, um, what can I say? There are issues about immigration and about Islam that need to be addressed. And I, I kind of appreciate the fact that they um, produce material like, I mean, I like, I think it's Faith Golding. I mean, I just love that woman. I just think she's amazing. Uh, I just love the journalistic work that she does. I just think it's amazing. There's some other people that do some good work that I think are really good. Um, but I don't, I don't think that a lot of it's playing on on people's fears a lot of the time. There's not a lot of homing in on positive issues as well you know I mean for example like take Muslims you know what about the good that Muslims do what about the good things that Muslim people do in the community rather than homing in just on the negative of Muslims because if you home in on the negative of Muslims you're just going to create negativity about all Muslims and stereotypes but do things as well where you show that Muslims are doing good things and it's the same with those who have come and, and become who've emigrated to the UK or to the West there are people that have done good things as well you know there are people who've emigrated and come to the UK and they've integrated and you know they've done good they're doing good and they're bringing positive things to the community so what I'm saying is that I, I really appreciate Rebel Media for um, bringing to light issues that the general media not, like, I, like Tommy Robinson, like with the grooming gangs and things like that. But I think there's a danger where if you, that not just with rebel media but with all types of media where when the media, and that comes back to America, when the media stereotype people and continue to be negative about one particular people group, it just ferments more and more division. 
So that's not to say that we don't speak about issues. We need to speak about certain issues. And we can't throw them under the carpet. We can't just hide the issues. We need to speak about certain things. We need to say certain things which the media are not saying. But at the same time, if you continue to be negative and negative about a people group all the time, without looking at the positive as well, it actually creates more and more division and it exacerbates the situation rather than make the situation worse. And I think that what we're seeing now, we're, we're seeing uh, more and more in America, more and more in, in Europe and more and more I I in the UK. And there's many, many reasons why this is. There's not just one issue, but we're seeing more and more fracturing of our society where there's more and more division and it's getting deeper and deeper. And I think eventually it will flare up into some kind of civil disobedience, even maybe in years to come, civil war. But the, 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 the divisions are coming more and more deeper. And I think that rather than make those divisions even more deeper, and I think that's where things are heading. I think people in the media and, 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 and in these various new media outlets are fermenting more and more division within our society. So Antifa, I think, are making more and more division in our society. And I think rebel media and many new outlets from the right to the left are fermenting more and more division in our societies. Um, that's not to say that the that issues need to be stated. Things need to be said. We can't continue to let loads of people in our Western countries, and uh, eventually we just can't continue to take them in all the time. There comes a point when it's just not possible. And then when we've done that, we need to think about, well, how does this work? How, how, do, how does other religions coming in here like, like Islam, how's that going to work with the state? And, you know, and are we going to be able to hold on to our national values? And how, how is it going to work? You know, we have to think these through. We have to ask these questions. Uh, we can't just, like, ignore them. Um, but at the same time, we can't ferment, keep fermenting the negativity. We, we Like, for example, the Rotherham uh, grooming gangs. That's an issue that needed to be talked about. It also was connected to Pakistani Muslims. That's an issue that needs to be talked about. You can't just hide that. You can't just pretend that that's not real. That's real, and it has to be discussed. But that doesn't define all Muslim men, and it doesn't define all, all Muslim people. You know, what about Muslim women or men that are doing good? Giving to the poor, helping charity, what about them? You know... But if you just focus on the negative, you're going to create more and more division. You need to focus on the negative in the sense of, say, yeah, you know, here's, a, here's an issue that we need to talk about. And it has to be talked about. But at the same time, that's not everything about Muslim people. You know, and it's the same with any group. Any group, you can take any group, whether it be black people, gay people, whether it be Hindus. You know, you can't keep being negative and negative and negative all the time about one group and, and as if everybody's like that because it, that, what that does it just creates division it just creates more and more division so I just uh, start the car because I've had my lights on so yeah, so for me, I th you know, I, I, what I'm saying is I, I really appreciate Rebel Media and the work that they do and I appreciate uh, some of their reporters. And I appreciate that they're talking about issues that are not being talked about in mainstream media. But at the same time, it, it it's too, too negative. There's got to be some positive things about different communities that, that are being highlighted. You know, um, there's many, there's many Muslim people that are doing good, you know, 
there's many Hindus that are doing good there's many there's many different types of people that are doing good stuff and uh, once you start to demonize a group then all you're going to do is create division and I, I, I think the forces of division are growing stronger and stronger and stronger by the day because people are hiding don't want to deal with the issues that need to be dealt with like the, the grooming gangs you know so more and more division is growing and growing and I think things are being put in place certain intellectual tools that have been put in place both on the right and both on the left in America and in the UK intellectual tools in other words books articles uh, websites certain intellectual tools are being put in place both on the right and on the left to ferment and prepare the ground for more and more division within our societies and uh, I hope common sense wins through I mean the British people I mean I do think there is discrimination towards Christians I do think it's a spiritual battle and there's discrimination but Britain has been tolerant but how long the nation will continue to be tolerant um, I think we're slowly descending into some kind of fascism and as we're descending into fascism it seems to be like undergirding these left and right groups are growing and growing and fermenting more and more division within our societies so for me the answer is preaching the gospel the answer is dialogue the answer is keeping being peaceful with people and not focusing on the negative of people and uh, preaching the gospel really and really just l loving Muslims loving Jews loving Hindus loving gay people but at the same time preaching the gospel saying this is the gospel really that, that's basically what I think is the way forward really so those are my thoughts anyway uh, I, I, like I said I appreciate rebel media I, I they seem to be in a bit of a trouble at the moment with some kind of controversy one of those reporters has, has snitched on them and saying that some, they're involved in some kind of uh, issue with finances that they've not properly uh, re re given accounts for their finances whether that's true or not I don't know um, but I think um, I've been thinking a lot about this issue about the right and the left I've been thinking a lot about it and um, I've been really emboldened and encouraged by some of the rebel media reporters for their boldness in speaking out about certain issues but at the same time I'm a little bit weary and cautious that it's there's a very fin fine line between bringing up issues that need to be talked about and systemically picking on certain people groups to the point where all you're doing is just being negative towards that people group and I think that that sometimes a lot of time the right whichever group the right is is in danger of doing that as well as the left the left is just as bad in their own way but I'm just saying like I, I, I have sympathies more to the right than I do to the left but at the same time I have some reservations about the right in terms of the negativity towards certain the constant negativity towards Muslims the constant negativity towards uh, people groups you know it's just constantly negative and, and I don't think that's fair I think there needs to be a balance 
talk about the issues that need to be talked about, like Rotherham grooming gangs, that's legitimate, that's, that's happened, has to be talked about. Talk about the issue about the Quran in, in British society, that is an issue that needs to be talked about. It's not being uh, against Muslim people, that is a, an intellectual, honest issue that needs to be talked about. How are we going to square being British and yet people want Sharia law? That's an issue that needs to be dealt with and challenged. But that doesn't mean to say, and, and then if bombs go off, you need to talk about, is the, does the Quran have any connection with these jihadists? I don't think that's the wrong thing to ask. I think that's a legitimate question to ask. It's not, so long as you're not doing it to demonize Muslims, but you, you, you see the intellectual connection and you can make that, and you want to debate that, that's fine. But, not, to, to demonize Muslims all the time, to demonize any other group all the time, all Muslims, it's not right. It's not right, and uh, it's not loving. And uh, it's very easy to fall into that trap. You know, so... So there we are. Those are my thoughts. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I mean, I never, I don't, I won't forget the Muslim. I won't forget the Muslim guy who gave me a drink of water. The Muslim guy gave me a drink of water in uh, Rochdale and his little son. And it, and it taught me a lesson. It, it taught me a lesson. And that lesson is that even with our religion, even with our religions, we, we share a common humanity. Yeah, you know, I don't want to be soppy or anything, anything like that. You know, but whether whether we're atheist, whether we're Muslim, whether we're Christian, whether we're Hindu, whether we're Jew, whether we're black, whether we're white, we all share a common humanity. And uh, I might not agree with with Islam. I might not agree with Hinduism. I might not agree with gay whatever, I might not agree with certain things but we, we share a humanity and if we start to hate one another then we break that bond of who we are as human beings once we start to demonize each other we, we, we begin to stop being human and we become savages so we need to maintain that that humanity about us that that we see in the other person ourselves we treat the other person as we would want to be treated that's what Christ said that we try to understand where the other person's come even though we disagree with her that we're tolerant with each other though we disagree with each other and try to live in peace with one another, try to understand each other. And if we can't understand it, at least try to. But even then we can still uh, show love to one another. Um, sometimes you've got to put your foot down, sometimes you've got to say no. There's going to be conflict. Sometimes there has to be in, 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 in the world sometimes when you put your foot down and you say no. This is enough, you know. I mean, for example, if, God forbid, but if British society turned round and said, uh, Parliament will declare Sharia law in all the courts of our land, that would be a time when you have to say, no, enough's enough, and put your foot down. And if it causes conflict, it causes conflict. So that's, there, are, there are times when you have to put your foot down. There are times when you have to say, enough's enough, and it causes division and conflict. But as much as we can, while we can, 
We have to try and sow peace and not division. When the time comes to stand up, then you have to make a stand. But as far as we can, we have to try our best to keep the peace. Um, so yeah, so that so the media has a responsibility to deal with the issues. Don't go to hide in some issues like Rotherham sex scandal. The media are now talking about it, so you have to do that. But at the same time, the media have to be careful not to demonise us certain certain groups or any group or any people but but to be careful there and the right and the left the political correct brigade of the BBC are forever demonizing Christians you know that's a that's an example of where the political correct brigade uh, are, are, are discriminatory where they demonize Christians and we 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 don't we don't we shouldn't be demonising any any group or we'll try to look for the best in people and treat them as we would want to be treated. That's a long spiel anyway, those are my thoughts guys. I've gotta get in, get myself a cup of tea, waffling on here like as if I think as if I'm some kind of political guru. <laughs> I'm not. Anyhow, I'm gonna go in. Thanks for listening to me, guys. Hey, bye, heck. It's dark out there, isn't it? God bless you. Have a lovely day or evening, whichever time you're listening to this. And uh, see you soon. God bless.